Um, right, okay, and now this is your profit margin. This is the super exciting bit. <laughs> so we are actually just going to sort of fast forward this bit whilst I fill in all the uh, margins and then we're going to take go through. Just if it's a little bit too quick with fast forwarding, you'll notice every time I want a new price bracket, I'm just pressing this plus button here. Yeah. Okay. And we will explain all the price ranges and what they mean in just a moment. Cool. Okay, guys. So now we've just filled in uh, our our, pro our well our price brackets. Yep. So, just first of all, all of these are all of these are, are recommendations on what you start with. This is based on an account which has the limits of a thousand items and ten thousand pound monetary. If you are if you win the lottery and you've got a much bigger limits, you might want to consider putting your percentages up a little bit and or maybe even your fixed profit up a little bit and this is just because you've got so many more listings visible and therefore you can just you can play with your margins but to start with if you've got a small well if you've got an account of that size or smaller you're going to want these kind of margins um wouldn't recommend going much lower than these margins but definitely you want to play around find your sweet spot what we're going for here for the first three months is not so much about large amounts of profit per sale, but we're going for sales velocity. It's very key that you guys understand this. Um, eBay kind of works similarly to Amazon in that sense. If you've got a lot of sales, they're going to keep on giving you sales um, and they're going to con continue to put traffic in front of your listings. This is because they can they know that you're a reliable seller and that you can handle this amount of sales in a day. So if we started off with high margins, we may get better profit margins per sale, but we're not going to get that many sales and therefore our sales velocity rate is not going to be very high. So first three months, all about building the account, you want high sales velocity. Now what this means is after the three months when you can raise, you start raising your profit margins or start raising them as soon as you start seeing good results, um, and you'll find that your sales will not really change that much. Yeah. So this is why we're going for low profit margins to start with. Okay. So we've got from zero to seven, we've got fifty percent. Yeah. So we um, the reason why we got seven pounds in there, we um, it kind of it was the sort of figure we came to is uh, there's something called add-on items on uh, Amazon. Now you may, if you've bought from Amazon before, you know there are add-on items. Now these add-on items, you can purchase them when you, when you buy something from there, but they have to be to a value of, with something where it's up to about twenty pounds. Um, that's with an item that's shipped by Amazon or shipped by an FBA, um, and it gets added to the basket. Now you can't ship them to a separate address anymore. You used to be able to, so we don't actually allow add-on items anymore. So that's, we don't tick that box above in those settings. So what happens is we put a minimum of seven pounds in on Amazon when we're actually collecting the uh, products. So in this case, we just put a standard fifty percent. Some will get through, and some and a lot of them won't be add-on items. So if you do get a sale, fifty percent uh, profit margin is great. So we leave that on. The next range is where the where products we're actually going to be listing. So we're going to be listing from the range of seven pounds. And we've got a profit of 28%. Now, at the moment, that oh, some, some, to some of you, that might actually seem high. That's 28% on top of the Amazon price. Now, at the moment, 28% is actually to us is quite low, but we started there because we want to, again, like Matt said, we're going to create a sales velocity. We want to get the sales in. When a sale's made on eBay, that product, and for you as well, it gets boosted again that exact listing so it's more likely to sell again so sometimes you'll notice you'll get something sell twice in the same day or two or three times in the same week or sometimes it'll be a few days before it gets it again but it kind of gets put back up in the rankings we move down to nine to eleven pounds we now go up to thirty percent i've actually increased this on purpose 
uh, because uh, the there's a there's a nice sweet spot between nine eleven pounds at around ten pounds the items they tend to be either sometimes been pushed down to that price on Amazon or they're just a lot of people going at that nine ninety nine range which is obviously a very sort of popular very common price range you get even yes. on the high street. Um, so we put that up a little bit because in, in the future, again, that will be pushed up. We can go all the way. I mean, I've got one account that's gone all the way up to sort of around near 60% on that price range, which is really high. Um, so you're making good profit per one. Uh, we're moving to 11 to £12.50, going back down to that 28% mark. Again, just getting that sales velocity, no fixed profit on any of these. And then we move into £12.50 to £14. This is where we actually drop it down to 20, 20%. But we're adding a fixed profit. And what we mean by a fixed profit is that's actually a pound for every single sale. So every time um, that item sells, it'll be a pound fixed profit plus 20%. Yeah. And as you can see, guys, uh, just, uh, you know, they're all around the same sort of profit margins from then, then on. But the fixed profit will change. Uh Hopefully, uh, that is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah, I mean, with, with these price ranges, if you notice, we've got they're very, very tight at the top, uh, as in when they're on the lower price range. And that's because we're actually going to be aiming at mainly listing lower priced items. And that's to create A, sales velocity, and B, so you're not using up all your limits and not being able to post many items. Because this is a bulk listing method... Um, we want to get as many items as we can get onto eBay while we grow your account. eBay will see that you've got lots of items selling well. They'll increase your, more like to increase your limits to bigger limits sooner. Um, and you'll be able to call in sometime sooner as well because they can see that you've got that sales velocity. Definitely. This is very important, guys. So, yeah, we do recommend that you list uh, lower priced items to start with. Mm. Try and avoid um, sort of these, these ones. Um, so from uh, sort of 50 onwards. Yeah, um, and that's something we will bring in later. I mean, we definitely do list those oh, more expensive items. Definitely. So don't worry about that. But for now, just uh, keep it keep it uh, quite cheap on Amazon. Yeah, and get your sales velocity up. So yeah, moving moving on then. So um, we've got the sales count repricing. Um, that's so that's gonna news. that's gonna remain unticked. Um, so that's uh, all, all it is. If you sell the same item a lot, um, you, actually can, you can actually increase the price. But again, we, we're not going to be using this setting. Um, yeah, we personally don't don't use it. I mean, if you want to, uh, feel free. Yeah, you can test it. Um, right, okay. So now we've got the... These are quite important, actually. So Easy Sync Auto Ordering Fee um, is 10p. Uh, no, that one is 10p, but we actually change it to 20p. And the reason why is because there's we actually turn on tracking like we did in the settings. And that also costs 10p. Now, so for every order, we should get tracking. It's not every single order we'll actually get tracking, but it's something like 80, 90%. So to cover that cost completely, because we want to try and have that covered, so we kind of see what profit we've got left over, we change this to 20p. It's actually technically 20 cents, US dollar, 20 cents. So um, it's we're covering ourselves, but even by a little bit as well. So yeah, in our favour. Now the next one is fixed PayPal free, and that's because uh, PayPal will take thirty p per. It's, no, it's twenty p. It's the, that's that set of the US one. That's oh, why. that's thirty yeah, cents. Yeah. Is that right? Okay, so it's twenty p, and they take that per transaction. Yeah. So make sure it's not point two there, guys. And then the percentage PayPal, PayPal it actually take, takes 3.4. So we're gonna, even though it says 2.9 right now, right now, but it's actually 3.4 at the beginning. Um, it will go down to 2.9 at some stage, and that's something that we can cover in the future because we do actually know how to get the PayPal fee down, so we get to keep more Definitely. of our profits. But once again, this is all about growth, guys. So as you grow and your st stores get bigger and you start turning over more, that's when PayPal will drop their fee. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, I mean, I think you work at this right down to about 1.9. Oh, yeah, I've got one of my accounts thing all the way down to 1.4 now, I think. 1.4, is yeah, it? Yeah, okay, so 1. I've got 4. it down by 2%, which doesn't might not sound like a lot, but... 2% difference on, on, you know, a lot of, a big turnover. You know, it's made a huge difference to my store. My oh, profit. it definitely does. Definitely does. So mm. do, don't take this for granted, guys. But this these all these fees are simply going to be added on to your, to, your, um, to your price so that these prices are already covered um, when EasySync works out your profit. So it's actually pretty handy that we're doing this. Yeah. Um, and then... Last but not least. eBay, yeah. <laughs> the, the final the big value one. fee. 
Now, <laughs> this is at 10%. We're going to leave it at 10%. Most, most of the time, because it does depend on the category um, of as to what uh, the final value fee is on eBay. Usually, it's about 9%, but we're going to leave this at 10% just to cover ourselves. And most of the time, you know, and so, some of them are 10% as well. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to leave that at 10%. Yeah. So just so in case you, I'll just brief explanation of final value fee, it's something that eBay charge on every single transaction. I know it looks high and it is quite high. They charge 10% of the full sale price. Um, and we can't avoid that. That's how eBay make a lot of their money. We, we, you'd think they get it through the shop fees. They actually get the majority of the money through final value fees. So it really does add up. So that's why it's in the calculator. So we know that cost is covered. Definitely. This uh, also to add to this, guys, when you when you see your invoice at the end of the month from pay, uh, from eBay and you think it's quite high, you need not worry because you only need to worry about the uh, shop fee. The rest of it you don't need to worry about. The ten percent they only make that money if you make if you make money. So don't worry about it. It's already covered in your costs. Yeah. And that that's it. Is that. So you just want to go and save price repricing settings there. Um, if you've got more than one store, then you may want to set, press save settings for all stores. Uh, that's totally up yeah, to you. Yeah. But when you uh, yeah, so when you click the save repricing settings, let's say you need to come in and edit the you want to edit uh, the margins, you want to increase your margins, add fixed profit, whatever you want to do, any settings in on the on this um, at all. When you click that save button, it doesn't reflect on your store instantly, but it will take up to a day just to reflect on your store. So your prices will start to change um, once you click that save button. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be going through all of these settings. So we'll see you there. Yay. <laughs>